All right, so uh, we're all familiar with the process of the FOIL method. When we have two binomials, such as a times or a plus b times x plus y, we know that we take the first outer inner last as given by the FOIL acronym. So a times x are the first two terms. Then we add it to a plus y, which are the outer terms. Then the inner terms, b times x. And then the last terms, b times y. And we get ax plus ay plus bx plus by as our final solution. Now, uh, the only issue that I have with this is how do we know it's true, aside from what our teachers have told us? So what I'd like to do is, using the distributive property, I would like to show an equivalence, uh, basically to give the reasoning of why we multiply all of these components together. So we'll take a look at that. Alright, so there's a couple things that we already know. Uh, we know the distributive property, so if we have, let's say, x times y plus z, we know that we can do the distribution of x times y plus x times z. So equals x times y plus x times z. Alright, so that's the first thing that we know. The second thing that we know is the commutative property. So we know that x plus y is equal to y plus x, we could even extend that further, x plus y plus z is equal to z plus y plus x if we wanted to. We could basically rearrange this however we want because the order of operations under addition or multiplication, uh, they don't really matter as long as we're not doing both of those operations at the same time. These will both come in value for this proof. All right, so now that we're ready to start uh, doing our proof or proving our beliefs, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a plus b, and let's just say that that's equal to some number or letter c. All right, It doesn't matter really uh, what letter we choose, we're just going to choose c because it comes next in the sequence. So using our original FOIL method, we're going to prove that a plus b times x plus y will give us ax plus ay plus bx plus by using this substitution. All right, so if we take the a plus b equals c and substitute it in, we get c times x plus y. And that's our original piece for our FOIL. All we did was took the a plus b and we replaced it with the letter c, all right? So first thing, we know that we can use the distributive property. So let's go ahead and use that. So c times x plus c times y, all right, easy enough. After that, we're going to start using some substitution. Okay, so we have c times x, but what really is c? Well, we know that c is a plus b, as our substitution is indicated up here. All right, that's times x plus, once again, we have letter c, so we're going to make it a plus b times y. All right, so the last thing we need to do is we need to take a look at a plus b times x and a plus b times y. Uh, we talked about the commutative property with addition. I showed an example, but it also works for multiplication. So x times y is equal to y times x. So we're going to also use that as some uh, justification in here as well. All right, so we're going to use the commutative property with a plus b times x, and we're going to rewrite it as x times a plus b plus y times a plus b. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, this piece down here and this piece should look remarkably similar to our piece up here, which is use of our distributive property. So let's use it one more time. All right, so we get on here x times a plus x, that's a times, b plus y times a plus y times b. All right, basically using all the rules we already set up. All right, uh, next up we need to switch some of the orders of it so it looks a little bit more like our original equation that we want to prove. So let's snap back over to that. Okay, once again, using our commutative property, we'll make this a times x plus b times x plus a times y plus b times y. All we did is for each of the uh, 
multiplication operations, we just switched the first and the second term. All right, now we're in the last piece. Uh, we want to use, once again, our commutative property so that we can rewrite these addition terms. And we want it to look exactly like AX plus AY plus BX plus BY. Basically putting the terms in kind of an alphabetical order. And it was arbitrarily chosen, it just happens to work out conveniently that way. So, A times X is fine the way it is. And then we want the A times Y. So we can swap these two. Plus, oh, that should not be a B, oops, my mistake. A times Y plus B times X plus B times Y. I'm just going to rewrite it because it looks kind of sloppy. So AX plus AY plus BX plus BY. So we started initially up here. Um, I didn't actually write it up front. So this is what we're actually trying to prove. All right, A plus B, X plus Y equals ax plus ay plus bx plus by. And this is the thing that we are trying to prove. We took one logical step and just substituted in a c for the a plus b. So that was done right here and down here. And then we started actually taking that interpretation and we started writing it out using our existing terms. So uh, at the end of this, we have proven that a plus B times X plus Y equals AX plus AY plus BX plus BY. I'm not sure uh, how many of your algebra teachers actually showed you the justification of this proof instead of just saying, oh no, just foil it out and figure it out. But uh, I like to you know, get a full disclosed proof that explains every single step of the logic. All right, so this is Brian Faduke. Thanks for watching.